Hi everyone. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make holiday gift tags. Um, the only supplies that you need for these gift tags is just your watercolors, a brush, and some watercolor paper. So we're not going to use any stamps or anything like that. I'm going to show you how to draw each of these simple little images. So the gift tags are two and a half inches by three and a half inches. So what I did was I took a sheet of Arches cold press watercolor paper that was seven inches by 14 inches and just cut it into 16 equal parts. Um, okay, so let's get started on our first tag. So for the first tag, we're gonna make a snowman. So I'm just mixing some blues together here on my palette. I'm using a little bit of French ultramarine and then a little indigo. And um, once I got the shade I liked, I stopped mixing. I'm gonna add a layer of clear water to the tag here. And because this is such a small piece of paper, you don't have to worry about it curling up. Um, so I'm not um, taping it down or anything like that. I'm just gonna apply my water and then my color and then just let it dry um, in between. And I'm just playing here. So you don't have to be as fussy as I am. You can just apply your color and then just let it sit and come back to it when it's dry. But I was just in a play playful kind of mood. So I just kept mixing it around and stuff. And then this is the white gouache we're going to use to make the snowman. So gouache is an opaque form of watercolor. So when we apply gouache, um, we won't be able to see the blue background. So it's a good way to um, add just white elements to a watercolor scene. I'll usually use white gouache instead of just white transparent watercolor. So for the gouache, I water it down a little bit when the, the paint feels too thick and it's just a feel test. You'll know when your paint is spreading and when it's not, when it's time to add more water. And for the snowman, it's very simple. It's just two little circles, a smaller circle for the head, and then a larger, more like oval shaped circle for the bottom of the body. And that's all we need for our snowman. He's just going to have just a little head and then a little body and that's it. We can add our hat now. So for the hat, I'm going to add um, a rectangle, but it's wider at the top so that we have um, the brim of the hat. It'll just look um, a little bit more realistic if you make the top wider than the bottom instead of just drawing a rectangle for the top of the hat. And now for the brim, I'm just gonna draw a curved line that kind of crosses over his forehead. And I'm gonna leave the space in between the top of the hat and the brim just clear because we're gonna color in with another color there. Um, and I wouldn't be able to paint over the black. So that's why I left that open. And now next we're gonna color his eyes in. So I'm just taking some neutral tint that's the color that I like to use for my black and I'm just dotting in the eyes. We're gonna give him a little coal mouth. So again, just dotting on um, the little pieces of coal for his mouth with the tip of my brush. I have a size six um, extra pointed brush, watercolor brush from Raphael. Um, this is my favorite watercolor brush of the moment. I maybe got it about a week ago and I just love it. I use it for everything. Um, and for the nose, I'm gonna use some new gamboge and some Aussie red gold for the nose, but any orange you have is fine. It's just a triangle in the center of the face. For the scarf, you can use any color here. I'm using red. Um, this is pyrrole red or pyrrole scarlet. And I'm just gonna make a curve around the neck. So just a little curved line. And then we have these little two end pieces of the scarf peeking down there. And they're just sort of wonky looking rectangles. And I'm making sure to leave a little white space in between just so that you can see that they're two different um, pieces of the scarf. Otherwise it would kind of all blend together. For the arms, we're gonna give him some little wooden arms, some little branches. So I'm just taking some brown and a very small brush. I think this is a four here and I'm just gonna draw in his little hands. So it's just um, kind of curvy lines here with like a little wishbone shape on the ends to make the hands. And I thought we'd give our snowman some feet. So I'm gonna just draw in the feet with some that's either sepia or it's sepia. You could use neutral tint as well if you want him to have black shoes. And they're just like little ovals right underneath his body there.
And then once we're done with that, we can add some buttons. So I'm just going to put two little buttons right underneath his scarf. And then for the brim or for the little band around the hat, I put green. I probably would have tried a lighter color if I had it to do over again, so it would have stood out more. Um, another thing you could have done is just color in that brim with the white gouache. And then either, even, even you could either <laughs> leave it white or you could color over with another color on top of the gouache. Um, and then it would appear bright. Okay, so now I'm gonna just write in to and from on my gift tag. So I'm just using a, a black pilot pen and that is it. If you have a stamp, you could use stamps as well if you don't like your handwriting. Um, I don't really like my handwriting, but I just went with it just to show you that even you know people who are self-conscious of their handwriting can write to and from without it being too bad. And then I'm just going to add a little design around the edges. So I'm just taking my silver gel pen and just adding some little lines there just to give a little bit more interest to the tag. And then I'm going to add some snow with a white gel pen. You could also take out the white gouache and just um, dab it on with your paintbrush or you could spatter it as well. But um, I like the controlled feel of using the the gel pen for that. And then I just added a little piece of twine. I punched a hole with my hole puncher and there you have it. There's our first tag. Okay. So moving right along to our second tag, we're going to do a total of 10 in this video, by the way, we're going to make a Christmas tree and I'm just drawing some guides to help me, um, add in the little leaves of the tree or the pine needles. So I just added three, um, kind of upside down V shapes just to give me a guide as I add the color so that I get the right shape of the tree. So as I apply the color, I'm just following those upside down Vs. I'm leaving a lot of white space in between because this is gonna help make our tree look like it has some snow on it. It's also gonna look like there is some um, area in between the branches as well. So it's gonna help to give the look of, of branches. Um, and it's just a good thing to practice to get used to leaving some white space um, in your in your illustrations like this. Because there's really, you know, you could go back in with a white gel pen or with white gouache, but there's really nothing like just leaving that space white to begin with. You'll just always get the best look um, if you leave the negative space there. Okay, so I added in the trunk just with a little bit of sepia. It's just a little rectangle down there. And then I thought, let's add some sky as well. So I just took some of that blue from the snowman um, background that we did before. And I'm just going to apply it until we get towards the bottom of the tree. And then it'll just look like there's snow on the ground that the tree is sitting in snow. I had a little shadow under there with um, that same blue. Blend it out with some clear water. And now we'll just add a little bit of darker green just to add some shading to our tree. So I'm just taking, um, I think this is undersea green or green or deep sap green. This might be deep sap green that I'm using for the uh, contouring. And then the tree itself is sap green. But any, any um, greens that you like will work fine. You just need a light shade and then a darker shade. And as you see, so now we have like some shadows on the tree. We have the snow on the tree. It just looks really, really beautiful with the combination of that white space and then the two greens. And then I'm just going to add my to and from to the top here for my gift tag. And then I added my twine and there we have it. So now we have our second gift tag moving right along. So we're going to keep with this um, foresty theme here and draw a pine cone and some pine branches. So I am just taking the tip of my brush and holding my brush kind of away from me or my the tip of the brush pointed towards my body and then I just kind of dab the color down that way so that you get a teardrop shape a series of teardrop shapes to make the little petals of the pine cones there and then once we finish our pine cone I'm just going to add the pine branches so we're going to have three of them and they're just going to extend um from around the pine cone or behind the pine cone. And I just added the branch in with that sepia color that I use for the pine cone. 
And then I'm just taking some of those same greens that I use for the Christmas tree to make the pine needles. And for the pine needles, I'm making sure that they're not all pointed in the same direction. So um, some um, are like facing upwards, some are facing outwards. Um, you just want to give it a little bit of a, a wild look so that it looks like it's real life. If they're all you know, pointed on in the same exact slanted direction, it'll look a little unnatural, but do whatever you like. And then I'm going to do the same thing for this little pine branch at the bottom, just add in my needles, adding some variation to um, the direction that they're pointing in. Now we're going to add some shading here. So I'm just taking that darker deep sap green and I'm going to add some needles in as well. And then that's going to just give us a little bit of variation between the two colors. I'm also going to take some sepia now and just draw back in my branches and then extend them a little bit towards the outsides a little bit just to give some more color and contrast into um, our branches. I'm just going to keep working. So it's really just a combination of my light green, my dark green, and then that sepia color to make the, the little pine needles. And honestly, I'm just killing time until my pine cone is dry so we could go ahead and add the second coat of paint. So I'm going to add a thin line of the sepia with a smaller paintbrush towards the bottom. And then I'm going to take another paintbrush, dip it in water and just blend that color out. So that's how I like to add my second layer of color for my watercolored um, images. It just gives a real, real pretty um, blended look when you do it like this. You add your dark color with one paintbrush, take another paintbrush with water and just kind of blend it in inwards or upwards or outwards away from where you just laid down the paint. And now that looks good. So now I'm going to add some more really dark brown details just to help um, flesh out the pine cone shape a little bit better. And then we're done. And I thought we'd add a gold kind of edging to this um, gift tag. So I'm just going to add the gold edging, um, only touching the areas that are white on the page. So where the branches are, we don't need to add them. Um, any gold there. So there we have it. Now I'm going to add my to and from and I think I'll do that towards the top. And again, like I said, if you have a stamp, you could use a stamp to do this as well. You could also add a little sentiment like Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays um, or a more personalized message up to you. Now for our fourth tag, we're going to make mistletoe. So I'm going to draw in the leaves. So I'm just taking the tip of my brush and then pulling up so that the top of the leaves are kind of fat, but then the bottom of the leaves are pointed. And I'm just going to go in kind of like an upside down pyramid shape here until we get to the top and then we'll add a bow once we get to the top. So I'm also making sure that they're not touching each other at this point so that the each of the leaves maintains its shape as, as um, well as possible. And now I'm going to add in some little stems to connect them all and then have them all join at the top there. And then while it's still wet, I'm just adding in some darker green here. So a little wet on wet technique just to get a little bit of interest to our leaves. And then I'm just going to blend all of that in with some clear water. And that was pretty quick and, and sloppy, but it uh, got the job done. Okay, so now we're going to draw on our bow. So I am going to draw kind of like a rounded triangle. That's how I like to think of it on one side. And that's going to be one edge of the bow. I'm going to leave a lot of white space. And then I'm going to draw a circle for the center. And then that kind of fat rounded triangle on the other side, leaving some white space as well. And then when we add the second coat, now we'll add um, some dimension to the bow. So I'm just going to draw a curved line along the bottom. And then this is going to make like the inside of the bow. So it, right away, it's going to just start to pop off the page there. And then I'm just going to fill that in with my darker red. I'm using Paraline Maroon for my darker red. 
and then I'm going to add some shading along the edges of the center of the bow as well and then some little lines like coming out from the center towards the middle to make it look like the fabric is folded a bit still trying to maintain some white space in there and then I'm just being real real careful as I blend this together and I do want there to be some harsh lines for this one so I don't want it to look completely blended for the bow I want it to um, be a little bit rough looking it just gives it more of a a vintagey look I think um, now I'm just going to draw on the um, ends of the bow or the ends of the ribbon and then just fix up the top of the bow a little bit and then we'll add just a little bit more shading to our leaves here so I'm just adding a real real thin line of color just along the edge of some of the leaves just to um, help define their shape a little bit better and then I'll just pull it out with that clear water like we had done earlier you can do that again just pulling it out with clear water adding a little bit more color just along the edge of one side of each of the leaves and then pulling it out with some water And now I think we're almost done here. Yes, we are done. Now we can add in our gold edging on this one. So I'm just taking my ruler, just kind of eyeballing about maybe a quarter of an inch from the edge. And I'm just gonna draw a gold line all along the perimeter of the rectangle. And then we can add our to and from. And there we have it. So there is our fourth tag. So now we're going to go on to our fifth tag. So I'm going to show you how to do two versions of presents. So this is present number one. This is super easy. You just draw a rectangle with whatever color you like for the wrapping paper and um, just fill it in. And then I'm just going to let it dry and then we're going to draw on the bow. So the bow is real simple. It's just a series of interconnected circles so that's all that I'm doing and for this bow it's going to be a little bit off to the right and then the second version we do I'll show you how to get it straight in the center of the present if you want to do that so they're interconnected circles and then some little circles connected um, to the circles as well until it just um, looks like a bow. I guess that's the best way I can describe it. Sorry that I can't be more precise there. Um, I thought I would add a decoration to our wrapping paper. So I'm just adding some little circles just all along the gift, just to make it look interesting. And then we'll add our gold edging to this tag as well. Um, at the end of the video, I'm going to show you another version, a third version of the present tag where it's a whole, it's a stack of presents. So there are seven or eight presents all in rainbow colors. And I'll show you how to, um, I'll just show you that one. I'm not going to show how to do it, but I'll, I'll show you what it looks like and you can copy it. Okay, for our sixth tag, we're going to make a wreath here. So I just used um, a round object. I had a round to um, trace the center of the wreath so that I have a guide so that I get a nice circle when I add my leaves. I happen to use my pencil sharpener that was on my desk. Um, any circle you have that's maybe, I think that's about two inches wide, I would say. And then we're just gonna add a leaf, like they're little V's really, little V's just going all the way around the perimeter of the circle. And you can shape your leaves however you like. I'm just um, being real rough with my paintbrush, so they're, they're really not, they don't have much of a shape. They're pretty much the same size <laughs> um, all throughout, just little Vs. So I'm not being careful to make sure that they're pointed at the tips or pointed at the bottom. I'm just kind of adding those little Vs. It's so small, you're not gonna notice. And then in between the little Vs, I'm just gonna add some more Vs with a darker color. So again, I'm using that combination of sap green for my light green and then deep sap green for my dark green. And then we have our little bow. And you could stop here if you like, or you can add this bow in that I'm adding. You could also add the bow in first before you add the greenery if you wanna do that. 
And I'm just using the same method for the bow that we used for the mistletoe just one or two tags ago. So I just lay down my red color, let it dry, and then add in um, the second coat when it's dry. I thought we'd also add some berries here. So I'm just taking the tip of my paintbrush and adding a little bit of little red dots wherever there's room just to add some berries to the wreath. Now we'll do that same process that we did for the mistletoe to make the bow. So we'll draw on the bottom of it, that little just curved line, and then we'll define the center of the bow just by adding some lines around the center of the bow, the circle in the middle, and then that's it. And then I guess we'll blend it out a little bit more for this one. And just playing around a little bit. And then we can add our to and from. Here, tried something a little different. So we put two on the top and from on the bottom. And there we have it. So there's our wreath gift tag. Now we're gonna make a hot cocoa mug with a candy cane. So I started by just um, painting. We're gonna paint a little U here. Like a, yeah, a U. <laughs> And then I'm just going to add the little curve for the top of the mug. And then I'm just going to fill in the mug with, this is cerulean blue. And I'm just going to leave the center of it light and then go back with some clear water and just blend in that color towards the center so that um, I like to leave the center of my mugs kind of light so that it looks like they have a shape, that they're a rounded object. Now we'll draw on the handle. And again, it's just kind of like a blocky C. That's how I like to think of it. And now we're gonna add a candy cane and some marshmallows, but I didn't wanna just paint them. I thought I needed to draw a guide for myself. So I'm just gonna draw in the candy cane, just like that. And then I'm gonna add the stripes as well and just curve them around the whole length of the candy cane. And if I don't like um, a shape that I get, I just take my little mono eraser and erase and start over. I'm using a hard pencil here. Um, this is um, a pencil that will give you a real, real light um, color on your paper. It's not a number two pencil. So I would definitely get a hard, um, a hard lead pencil to, to do this. And then I'm just gonna draw in some little marshmallows there and then the back of the mug and that looks good. And now we have some guide that we can follow when we color in the rest of it. So I'm just coloring in the back of the mug. So now it looks like the mug is closed. I'm adding some panes gray along the edge of the candy cane just to define its shape. And then I'm gonna add some brown in the open areas of the mug just so you can see the hot cocoa poking through. Just gonna add a little more hot cocoa there. And then there's one little marshmallow sticking up and I decided to erase him. So I just got my eraser. And now we're gonna add the red stripes to the candy cane. So I'm just taking a light wash of that same red that we've been using for the, the bow and the berries and gift tag, the past gift tags. And I'm just gonna add a light wash and then add a little bit more color, just drop that in there. And then I'm adding some definition around the, the marshmallows just with some Payne's Gray, it's just very, very light. And now let's add a little bit more color to our mug. So I'm taking some indigo now, that's a really, really light wash of indigo and just um, applying the color around the edges of the mug and around the lip, and then I'm just gonna blend it out so we have that nice light center area of the mug. And then I thought we needed a little bit more shading over here on the right, so I'm just gonna drop in a little more color, let it bleed a little bit, and then blend it. And along the handle as well, just to um, make it look um, like a, it's separate from the mug, so I just added some more color around the handle like where the handle touches the mug. 
and I'm just gonna blend a little with some clear water and now it looks good. So now we can finish up coloring our candy cane. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more red here and then blend it out with some clear water just to brighten up that red a bit. And then a little bit more brown just to deepen up the brown of the hot chocolate so that you can see it. And then I'm gonna take some Payne's Gray right underneath there just so that we can see the shape of the candy cane so it stands out against the white background. Just adding a very, very light touch of Payne's Gray. And then I'm just gonna add some more color to the back of the coffee mug. So it's just that indigo again. And if you think that um, this design is too fussy for a gift tag, you can make it a little bigger and just turn it into a card if you like. So I think it would make a great Christmas card, this little mug. This is also, um, this is also great practice just for watercoloring in general because um, the shapes are pretty simple and then you get to um, try to learn how to make the appearance that the mug is three-dimensional and rounded by adding that shading. So real, real fun image to color. And you can use any colors that you like. You could make the mug purple or pink or yellow, whatever your favorite colors are. Now I'm going to add a sentiment here and I'm going to add a, a curved happy holidays. And to do that, I just drew a guide with um, my pencil and then I just um, followed the guide along to write in happy holidays. And then I'm just going to go over my pencil with my black pilot pen. You just want to make sure you use a waterproof ink here so that it doesn't bleed. And if you have a stamp, you could use a stamp here to add a sentiment, but I just thought it would be fun to um, just add a little handwritten note. And then we'll add our to and our from underneath. And that completes our cocoa mug card. I'm just going to erase that little guide underneath there. And there we have it. So there is our seventh tag. So for our eighth tag, we're going to make present number two. So for this, I am using some sap green for the present. It's just a rectangle, just like before. Then you let the rectangle dry. And then for this one, we're going to place the bow right in the center. So to start, I have a real thin pointed paintbrush. I think this is a two and I'm just going to draw those two ovals next to each other. And then I'll start um, interlinking some more oval shapes. And then there you have it. Now we have our cute little bow design. Then I'll add some little polka dots as well just to decorate this gift a little bit. This is super simple, but very, very fun to do. And the best thing about this is you can make your gift wrap whatever color you like and you can decorate it however you like as well if you just feel like doing something simple and kind of doodling it's um this is a good project for that and then i'm gonna add my curve sentiment as well same way as before i just drew my little curve line as a guide and then added the type over that and then i'm just gonna draw over it with my black pen and then once I do that, I can go ahead and erase the guide that I drew on and then add my to and from. And there we have it. So here is our second version of the present tag. For number nine, we're going to do a Christmas stocking. So I'm just drawing in the stocking shape here and then the top of the stocking, the kind of fluffy um, woolly part of the stocking just going to use my eraser where um, I change the design a little bit as I went along. Just add a little more fluff here. And now this looks good. And then I will add the little, um, the little link up top or the little, I can't think of the word right now, the the hanky thing. Let's just call it the hanky thing. Um, all right. So now to color in our stocking, I'm just using Pyrrol Red. I'm just going to color in the whole base of the stocking. And then I'm going to color in this little piece up top with that same red. It's the hanger. Why can't I think of the word? The loop. 
Um, and now for the fluff on the stocking, I'm just um, adding some little squiggly lines here with my Payne's Gray. And then I'm going to take some clear water and blend it in a little bit along the edge. And that's it. So that's all I did to get that little bit of a fluffy look there. And now we're going to add some shading underneath the white fluffy part of the stocking. I'm just using my Paraline Maroon. Um, that's been my favorite color to shade red lately. And I'm just going under Neath the white fluffy part and then around the back of the stocking and then I'm just blending it out with some clear water and making sure to leave the center of that foot pretty light just to make the image um, look interesting and dimensional. I'm going to add that same shading to the little loop up there and now we can just add our to and from and it's as simple as that. So these gift tags also, this is a great way just to um, practice your watercolor illustrations because it, you know, they take maybe five to 10 minutes each and you get to practice a new object. And then at the end of it, you also have a, a gift tag that you can use for a gift. So, you know, you're killing two, two birds with one stone. Well, that's not, uh, I would never kill a bird. It's not nice to kill birds. All right. Um, next, we're going to do an ornament. And... Um, for this one, I th thought let's make um, a blue Christmas ornament. We've done so much red and green already in this video. I want to try a different color. So I use my pencil sharpener again to just trace a circle. And I'm just going to add my color. That was a cerulean blue for the first coat. And then I'm going to add my indigo. And it turned out to be a little darker than I liked. It looks a little more black than blue, but... It's like, you know what, maybe this will be a gift tag for a man, a man who loves navy blue. So um, just adding my color, adding the darker color along the edge there, trying to leave a highlight. So I just dabbed up um, some of the color on the left with that. And still not happy with where the color is. So I'm going to go ahead and add some of that French ultramarine marine to just brighten it up a little again you do not have to be as fussy as I am you can just add one coat of color let it dry and then add your second coat to just add some contour um, but I was in a playful mood I guess and then we'll add the little um, holder for the ornament and then the little hook and then the little string that attaches the ornament to the Christmas tree, or in this case, just to the top of the card here. And now I'm just gonna let this dry. And I saw that my black bled a little bit down into the Christmas ball, and I'll just pick that up just with um, a dry brush. So if your color is mostly transparent, it should be pretty easy to pick up if it's still wet. Um, if you have a staining color, it might be a little more difficult to pick up, but still give it a try with a dry brush. We'll add our to and from. And then for this one, I thought we would add a little bit um, more funky of a design here. So I'm just going to add two um, silver lines down the right side. And then I'm going to crisscross them with two more lines um, just at the top here. So just playing around with like different styles. And again, I'm thinking that this is probably going to be a gift tag for a man. So I'm just trying to make it look all angular and masculine, I guess. Um, tried to add some silver to that little cap on the ornament. Then decided against it and thought, let's just, um, we'll add in a second layer of color in a second once we finish coloring in the ball. So I just have my indigo and I'm just going to apply my second base of color and then just blend it all out with clear water just like that trying to leave that little highlight on the left there and then I'm going to take some black some neutral tint here and just add some thin lines just to make it look like there are little grooves in that little topper there like you would see on an actual ornament and that's it so that is our I think that's our ninth tag is that our ninth tag 
Um, I guess that was our 10th tag. Okay, so now we get to the bonus content. So now we're going to draw a little Charlie Brown Christmas tree. And you can use this for a card or you can make a smaller version to make it as a gift tag. So this sheet of paper is half the size of or double the size of one of our gift tags. So it's three and a half inches by five inches. And I'm just going to draw in the shape here. So I just have a curved line for our trunk. And then I have the little branches extending off of the, um, the Christmas tree, just like so. And then we'll add this little round ornament hanging off this branch here. And then we'll add just a couple more scraggly little branches here. And then another one at the top. And then that's pretty much it for the Christmas tree. There aren't many branches. And then we're just gonna draw the little blanket, Linus's little blanket around the bottom here. And I'm just gonna work a little bit just to get the right shape. So you really just need an oval. Um, that'll help you like an oval with some raggedy edges just um, so that it looks like it's, if a blanket were laying down, it wouldn't be just laying in a, um, a flat or a straight line, right? It would be kind of rumpled and you'd get little folds here and there. So anyway, but this gives me enough to get started. And there's our little gift tag version on the right. So we have the bigger one that you can use for a card and then the little tiny one for a gift tag. To color, I'm gonna color in the base of the tree first and I'm gonna use some sepia here and just color over all the lines that we had drawn in. And again, this is really nice and relaxing once you get your drawing down because you're just basically tracing over it so you don't have to do much thinking and the painting is pretty easy. Um, so I actually really enjoy doing this project. Uh, I enjoy doing all of them, but this one was particularly enjoyable, I think also because it's just such a great image, right? The little Charlie Brown Christmas tree. All right, so for our branches, we're gonna use that same technique that we did for the pine cone or the pine uh, um, leaves, branches, pine branches. Uh, and I'm just making sure to vary the direction of my needles every now and again, just so that it looks natural. So for the most part, they're gonna go upwards on a diagonal, but then I'm also gonna have them going sideways or going backwards at some points, just so that we have the needles going in different directions. I'm gonna start with my light green. So we're going to do a layer of sap green to start. And then we'll add in our darker, our deep sap green for the second layer, and then a tiny, tiny bit of some sepia at the end. So again, just adding in our leaves here. I'm making sure that the leaves don't extend all the way to the base of the tree. So we see a little bit of the branch showing as well. You know, remember this is, um, these pine needles are supposed to look a little scraggly. It is the little Charlie Brown Christmas tree that looks like it's seen better days. So um, again, this is another project where you don't have to be perfect. In fact, the more imperfect you are, I think the more realistic your Charlie Brown Christmas tree will be. So we're gonna add the red ornament here. And I had a little difficulty um, following my, the circle that I had drawn in, I'm not gonna lie. So our Christmas ball is gonna get a little bigger than um, I had planned, but that's okay. You know, when you're watercoloring, you just, some things you can't erase and you just have to go with it and just, you know, go wherever the, um, wherever the painting leads you. So I'm just working now on trying to get a rounded um, Christmas ball after I kind of drew outside the lines a little bit. And I'm just gonna work and work and work. And now I'm like, okay, maybe I'll leave it alone. Or maybe I'll go back and try to work on the top a little bit more. And now I'm like, it's starting to look like a square. I'm like, now I don't like the highlight. And now I think it's too opaque, so I'm gonna pick up some of the color. So I'm just adding some clear water and then I'm just, I keep going back and dipping it on my um, 
paper towel just to take the color up. I could have also just dipped my paper towel right onto the Christmas ball as well. But at this point now it looks good. It looks like um, we have enough variation in the red that I'm happy. And now we're gonna add in some color to our blanket. So I'm gonna use cerulean blue for our base. And I'm gonna leave some areas lighter as well because it's going to help us give the illusion that there are folds in the blanket when we go back to add our second version. So I'm making sure there's some white space there. And then while that dries we will go and finish up our little leaves. So I'm going to go ahead and draw in our second layer of pine needles with the deep sap green. And right away, as soon as you add that second layer, you can just see the pop um, right away. It just starts um, kind of popping off the page and looking more and more realistic. So I love that. That's one thing I love about watercolor. It's like you add the first layer and your painting looks pretty good. And then you add the second layer that adds the contrast. And it's like, wow, it really, really pops and um, looks like something you'd be really proud of, I think. So I'm going to just keep working here. And by the way, the paint, I think I said the paintbrush that I'm using. So I'm using a size six extra pointed round by Raphael. And I have to say like, this is my most favorite paintbrush. And I've tried the black velvet squirrel brushes, which I really, really like a lot. I've tried the Windsor and Newton um, series seven brushes, which I do not like at all. They're very expensive. And I just, um, I feel like I just don't get a good point with my pointed rounds that I do with the squirrel hair brushes from Black Velvet or with um, these sable brushes from Raphael. So I think I'm going to probably get some more of these Raphael brushes in other sizes and it might become my go-to for a bit. We'll see. Um, I also love the Aqua Elite. It's a synthetic brush by Princeton. That's another brush that I use a lot and I've used it a couple times in this video as well. Aqua Lee, it's pretty, um, not very expensive, but like really, really good as well. But there is just nothing like a, a good sable brush. Um, and I really, really love this Raphael brush. So now I'm just adding my last, sh um, my last shade here to the tree and to the branches. This is just the sepia. And then this is just going to make the trunk of the tree pop a little bit more, as well as those little pine branches. I'm going to add some black to the top on the Christmas ball. And now we can add in our second um, layer of color to the blanket. I'm just trying to make it look like there are folds here. So I'm just drawing some kind of squiggly lines in a circular pattern and then I blended it out too much, I didn't like it, and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to pick up the color. So these are, for the most part, pretty much non-staining colors that I'm using here. I think the indigo is non-staining as well as a cerulean blue. And at this point, I'm like, ooh, I think I messed it up a little. So I'm just gonna take my paper towel and just pick it right up, and it doesn't leave much staining at all. I let it dry, and then we're gonna try again. So we're going to go on round two and adding the fold into the blanket. And I'm just making that area around the tree trunk pretty dark. And then I'm just going to add some little rounded squiggly marks to make it look like they're little like wrinkles in the blanket. And I'm just going to leave it. So I'm not going to blend it. I'm just going to leave it at this point. And I think it looks good enough. And then we'll add our last layer of shading to our Christmas ball. I'm using that perylene maroon again, just adding the color around the edges, leaving that little shine in the center. And that's it. So here is our little bonus content, our little Charlie Brown Christmas tree gift tag or card. Um, and now let's take a look at the tags we've made. I'm also gonna show you some other versions as well that I just painted off screen, just in case you want some other ideas for gift tags. So let's go ahead and start by this is one that I did with some berries. So this is one I didn't show, but um, it's very similar to the techniques used for that little pine cone version. Here's the Christmas tree that we had made earlier. Here's another version of that Christmas tree. 
um, where I just added in a background with some moon glow. There's our little snowman. Here is another version of, it's similar to that pine cone one, just some berries on some pine needles. Here's our mistletoe that we had done earlier. Here's our little wreath. And for these um, to and from, the, the last few that we did, I didn't like punch a hole in them yet. I'll do that later. Um, this is another idea. So this is a cute idea for a card if you just wanted to make four little wreaths. So I just used a nickel to trace the center of those circles and I just made little baby wreaths. So it's a kind of a fun idea for a card. And then if you want to use that same idea, you could just make four any objects and just kind of arrange it like that and put your sentiment on the bottom. So any of the things that we did in this video today, you could just arrange them in a set of four and get that same style if you like. Here's our little Christmas mug. Here's a figgy pudding that I made. I just made this today. I just um, pulled up a picture online and copied it. And next we have this third version of the Christmas presents that I was telling you about. Um, this is, I just drew a whole bunch of little squares and rectangles in rainbow colors and then I let it dry and then I just added on the bows with a white gel pen and added two from at the bottom. So it's just, it was a really, really fun, relaxing project to do and also kind of a cool look. Um, and then here's our little Christmas ball, our masculine Christmas ball. And that is it. So I hope that you had fun watching this video. I hope that um, you give some of these gift cards a try or gift tags a try. It's lots of fun and a great way to practice watercoloring and also get like a great um, end product that you can use at the end of it. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great day and I will see you again soon in another video.